few weeks ago on this channel, we broke down how Jamal Adams fits in the Seahawks defense. We looked at his skill set, and we discussed how I thought Pete Carroll would utilize him on this team. Well, as week one is already in the books, I wanted to look back through his game against the Falcons and talk about how he played. From my film study, Adams was straight up dominant. He instantly transformed this defense, playing in a variety of roles. He filled the hole of exactly what the Seahawks have desperately needed over the past few years. I'll be honest with you, the first thing that really stood out to me as I went through his film was the number of times Adams blitzed the quarterback during this game. I counted 11 plays where he rushed the passer. Now, if you know a lot about the Seahawks defense since Pete Carroll took over, you'll know that he rarely uses safeties in this capacity. For example, in all of 2019, Bradley McDougal rushed the passer a grand total of 22 times. Adams did half of this in just a single game. Let's break down his sack from the second quarter. The Seahawks defense was faced with a third and six. After the Falcons lined up in shock and with their 11 personal package, Seattle threatened an all-out blitz. They had seven defensive players on the line of scrimmage with both the inside linebackers mugging the A-gaps. Based on the situation in this look, it almost felt like the Seahawks were running a cover zero blitz. However, once the Falcons started motioning Julio Jones and Hayden Hurst around the formation and the defense didn't trail, it pretty much indicated they were playing zone coverage. Now, while identifying the coverage is one thing, determining where the blitz was coming from is another. On this one, the Seahawks were running a cover three zone dog blitz. The Seahawks lined up to overload the open side of the formation. After getting in this position, Matt Ryan didn't adjust the protection because Jamal Adams came down to the line of scrimmage a few seconds before the start of the play. This is the key point on this one. His delay allowed the defense to disguise the rush. On the other hand, since the Falcons also didn't adjust to the threat of the open side pressure, they ran their three-man half slide protection to the strong side and didn't even bother looking for Adams on the edge. After the snap, he burst into the backfield and he took down Matt Ryan for the seven-yard sack on the play. During this game, Adams had four pressures on those 11 pass rush attempts. I already talked about the aforementioned sack, but his four pressures actually led the entire Seahawks defense in week one. For a team that lost Jadavian Clowney in free agency, they desperately needed help to get pressure on opposing quarterbacks. All of us this past offseason have asked the same question about this team. Where will the pressure come from? In week one, it was Jamal Adams. I can definitely see that happening in future games as well. Before we move on from the pass rush, last season the Seahawks were below average in their frequency of call blitzes against opposing teams. They blitzed on 27% of their plays. Meanwhile, in week one of this season, the Seahawks sent a blitz on 33% of their snaps. This is well above average. As I asked that rhetorical question a moment ago, I expect this number to hold throughout the season. I hate to say it, but this defense simply can't create pressure from a four-man rush, so sending Adams to the backfield might be one of their only options. Before we move on to talk about coverage, this video was sponsored by my good friends at Blinkist. Blinkist is an app for the avid learner that simply doesn't have the time to sit down and fully read a book. This app distills that information for you in a quick and easy to read format, while also giving you the flexibility to listen to it in a podcast when you're out and about as well. What I really like about it is that they summarize all the key takeaways in just 15 minutes, and they tell you everything you need to know. For example, two books that I absolutely loved were Sapien's A Brief History of Humankind and Dale Carney's classic How to Win Friends and Influence People. Blinks' versions of these two books were perfect. It gave me all the insights without forcing me to sit down and spend 15 hours each to get that same information. Seriously, this is a great app, especially for people like me who love to constantly learn while not committing to the demands of a full book. For a limited time only, and for the first 100 people that follow the link Blinkist.com slash Samuel Gold, you're going to get unlimited access to Blinkist for one week, plus 25% off your full membership. That seven-day trial is completely free, and you can cancel at any time during that period as well. This is a great deal exclusive to this channel, so make sure you check it out. Now, a moment ago, I mentioned that I wanted to talk about Jamal Adams and his ability in pass coverage. Not only was Adams the Seahawks' best pass rusher, he was also the team's best player in coverage as well. The secondary during this game was absolutely torn apart by the Falcons. Matt Ryan finished with 450 yards, and Atlanta had three receivers break 100. I wish I could be optimistic about this one, but every single cornerback, including Quinton Dunbar, Shaquille Griffin, Marquise Blair, and Trey Flowers, they all struggled horribly in this game. Adams, on the other hand, was the lone bright spot of this defense. Let's look at one of my favorite plays from Adams that happened in the first quarter. After a run stuff by Bruce Irvin on first down, the Falcons lined up an empty on second and 12. The Seahawks had two safeties deep and were clearly in zone coverage based on their alignment before the snap. Seattle was playing cover six on this one. Cover six is a combination of cover four and cover two. The Seahawks aligned with their cover four side to the boundary while they played cover two to the field side to face against this offense. Now, if you already watched my video on Adams after the trade went through, what you should notice is that this play should look strangely familiar. He made the same exact play against the Jaguars that we're going to break down here. This is why I'm so excited for his skill set and why I knew his ability would immediately transfer. His ability to drive on routes from a quarter look showcases just how good he is. Watch what he does on this play. 
After the snap, Matt Ryan starts by looking to his right at the cover two side. The Falcons are actually running a form of a smash concept with a drag coming in from the outside receiver. If Matt Ryan threw the ball on time and with loft, he might have been able to place his ball over the head of Shaquille Griffin by the 40 yard line. This could have been a completion. However, due to the shell of the defense after his drop, he then moved on to his fourth read, which is the backside dig run by Julio Jones. Before Ryan even started his throwing motion, Adams already broke on his route. He knew what play was coming, and he knew he had a drive on his receiver. This is literally perfect coverage. Even though the ball was thrown to Jones' front side shoulder, Adams was ready to jump on the pass, and he broke it up before Jones could grab it. I love this play because it showcases Adams' intelligence and his ability to recognize routes. It also shows his ability to execute on what he sees, which is obviously very important as well. Here's another play from the second quarter that also showcases these traits. It's 3rd and 11 from the Falcons' 10-yard line. The Seahawks decided to play man coverage with a bracket call and Julio Jones on this play. As I discussed in my video on the Patriots' defense two weeks ago, this is often called cover 2 cone. The way it works is that Shaquille Griffin will take outside leverage, while Jamal Adams will take everything to his inside. Immediately after the snap, Adams sees that Jones takes off on his drag route. Matt Ryan knows that Jones has a matchup advantage against Griffin, so he immediately throws it to him underneath. Meanwhile, Adams comes from his too high safety spot, and he sprints at a perfect angle, anticipating exactly where Jones will be. He goes full throttle, and he hits Jones at the 15-yard line. Now, while he didn't exactly take him down immediately, he's able to bounce him backwards, and he still finish him to the ground eventually. On what could have been a bigger play with yards after the catch, Adams' efforts single-handedly ended this play before it began. This was just an excellent play, and it shows us exactly what we liked about Adams in the first place. Now, these two plays were exactly what was missing all of last season. For as much as I like Bradley McDougald and his positive effect on team chemistry, there's simply no substitute for elite talent. That's exactly what the Seahawks got in Adams. They should do whatever it takes to keep him. He's that good, and he's only going to keep making plays for this defense. Outside of those two plays, the main things that stood out to me as I went through this film was the variety of coverages and actually the disguises that were used by the Seahawks during this game. Cover 4, for example, was called 15 times, making up roughly 27% of the Seahawks' play calls. While that number does seem high considering this team is mainly a cover 3, cover 1 defense, the vast majority of those plays happened in the fourth quarter. This makes sense considering the fact that the Seahawks were up 16 points and were definitely playing a bit more conservatively. They wanted to keep everything in front of them while also allowing the clock to dwindle down. This is also why the defense allowed over 150 passing yards in this quarter alone. Now, if you look purely at the first three quarters while the game was still competitive, the Seahawks ran the same three coverages that they did last season. They mainly ran cover three, cover one, and cover two in that order. As we already discussed, Adam's skill set is a perfect fit for this defense. He can play the buzz roll or the flat curl zone in cover three, he can come down from that too high safety look to make tackles, and I love when he's hunting for crossers over the middle of the field. The other observation I made while going through this film was that with Quandre Diggs and Jamal Adams as the main safeties, they did a lot more late rotations than I'm used to. Instead of knowing before the snap who the deep and who the underneath safeties are, they would rotate with about two seconds left on the clock in order to help disguise this defense. This is actually something the Seahawks haven't done a ton of over the past two years. The last thing I'm going to say is that the one coverage that I actually expect to see more of during this game was cover one Robert. I didn't actually see them using that during this matchup. That play call while using Adams' abilities to hunt over the middle for crossers is a great use for a skill set. I'm guessing, however, that the main reason why they didn't use it simply comes down to the other cornerbacks. It requires your other cornerbacks to be solid in coverage, and unfortunately, they really struggled against this team. They had a very hard time stopping anyone. From my tracking, there were communication issues, there were busting assignments, and I honestly just saw too many one-on-one -on -one matchups where a cornerback simply got beat. Now, to be fair, I do expect some of this to happen just because of the short off season. While this may be the case, it's still something this defense definitely needs to fix. If they want to make a Super Bowl run, they can't expect Wilson to put the team on his back every single play. They'll face too many good defenses, and the rest of the team really needs to step up. Now, while the topic of Russell Wilson could certainly be a video on its own, and I promise you I'll get to it later on in the season, I really liked what I saw from Adams during this game. I haven't really talked about him in run defense, but he was a big factor here as well. He blew up multiple plays, creating two tackles for loss. He chased down ball carriers across the field, he made tackles that normally this defense wouldn't make, and he definitely brought some swagger with his presence on the field. You can seriously tell that his energy made a huge difference even on routine plays. To me, it's pretty easy to say that this trade has already started paying dividends for the Seahawks. Sure, it was expensive, but elite talent is extremely hard to come by. In my opinion, they need to lock him up during the regular season. Somebody else will see his obvious talents that we broke down this video, and they're going to overpay for him next summer. Adams is definitely worth it, and his natural ability alone is exactly what makes the rest of the Seahawks better. Well, that's all I have for you in this video. 
If you enjoyed it, make sure you subscribe to the channel below. I'll have a new video out for you next week, so definitely keep an eye out for that one. Until next time, take care of yourself, and you can follow me on Twitter at Samuel R. Gold.